Hey UFC betters, JD here from Best MMA Picks again, coming at you live with another broadcast. Um, just prior to uh, the main event of uh, UFC Fight Night 79, Henderson versus Masvidal, taking place in Seoul, South Korea. Should be a pretty interesting uh, card with some different exciting, kind of interesting things happening surrounding this card. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my screen share going here, and there's a few things that I want to talk about. But we're going to kind of try something new here. I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes long. So I'm going to keep things short and sweet and just keep my leans. These are all raw leans. I want to forewarn people ahead of time that I have not reviewed an adequate amount of footage on things that um, I'm planning on betting. But um, anything that I do post as a play, you can bet that I did review footage and I put a lot of thought into it. And did a lot of the math on that. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. This is all raw. Um, I, you know, I've done some research already, but I haven't reviewed as much footage as I'd like to. All right, so let's just get down to business right now. Um, also, real quick, uh, we started a Facebook um, page. You can add me. Uh, the name is uh, James D. Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y. -E and um, you can add me on Facebook. You can find me. Um, and then there's also a best MMA picks page that you can uh, add to your favorites. We will be posting plays on there as well. Um, we also have an Instagram, which is Instagram.com forward slash best MMA picks that we added as well. So make sure that you add us on those to your favorites. Um, so we're going to get down to business here. Let me get my screen share going here for us. And... All right, so here we are at our uh, UFC.com website, and I'm just going to kind of move down the line, but we got our main event, Benson Henderson versus Jorge Masvidal, a fight that I am actually really looking forward to a lot. should be a great fight. Um, unfortunately, this is taking place like early in the wee hours of the morning due to the time zone differences between here in the United, the United States and, uh, and Korea, South Korea. However, it would be a good one, uh, you know, if you have a way of reviewing it later or um, watching the replays later, it would be a good one to watch. There are some interesting things that could be happening on this card. Um, so let's go ahead and kick things off real quick with our first matchup of the night, Dominique Steele and Don Hyun Kim. Uh, a lot of people dubbing him Don Young Kim too, because there's actually another Don Young Kim, the more famous Don Young Kim from South Korea, Stun Gun on the card. So I've never actually seen this guy fight. However, I'm hearing a lot of different things about him from some sharps. Um, Dominic Steele is um, a wrestler and a striker brawl slash brawler. Don Young Kim is the more technical striker out of the two of these guys. And um, should be a pretty interesting matchup. Uh, Dominic Steele has been known for some chin issues. Uh, he's kind of got the finish or be finished mentality. He comes in as a brawler and he leaves himself wide open. He has a lot of, he's not very experienced. Um, he's finished a lot of guys in the first round, um, but he also got tagged and finished, I believe in his last fight it was. Um, and he's had some issues there with his chin. So I really question this guy against technical strikers or anybody that has a decent amount of technical striking ability and power. Um, he was finished, as you can see, uh, uh, right in the first round by Zach Cummings rather easily. Um, so I worry about him as a pick against a guy who's a more technical striker than Don Young Kim. Um, with that being said, Don Young Kim has probably uh, a little bit of a disadvantage in that he is taking the fight on less than a week's notice uh, due to some changes and shifts on the card. Um, he has some good training partners. He trains with uh, a very well-known Korean fighter, Kung Ho Kang, who has a very sick and slick submissions game. Um, and he's very well. He, I mean, he this guy is a, a really slick sub-artist. So, um, you know, there should be some good uh, iron sharpens iron there for Don Young Kim, too. And I really feel like uh, he's going to have some advantages with his technical skills, body locks, elbows. Um, yeah, I believe he's a judo black belt, if I remember correctly. 
He's also the smaller fighter. Dominique Steele is a natural welterweight, whereas uh, uh, Don Young Kim is uh, a natural lightweight. Um, he's also more active as a fighter. Uh, Dominique Steele hasn't taken quite as many fights. The last fight Don Young Kim uh, was three months ago. So my prediction for this one, I believe that there's going to be a finish in this fight. One of these two guys is going down. Uh, you know, More than likely, Dominique Steele is going to get tagged. And I, and I question his chin here. I think it's going to get a, be a TKO for Don Young Kim, probably first or second round. Um, as far as odds, looking at the odds, these guys are pretty well evenly matched with Dominic Steele coming in as a favorite, negative 128, and you've got a positive 116 for Don Young Kim. Matt Maestro over under is set at 2.5 rounds at the under, um, kind of as a not, not favored here. But I still think that there's going to be we're going to see a finish here. I think that's the play. Uh, but you know, not sure. I want to your views and footage on that one. Next fight we have Ning Wang Yo versus Marco Beltran. Wang Yo is coming in as a favorite at negative 171. Beltran is uh, underdog at positive 153. Over under set at 2.5 rounds. Over being favored at negative 166 and the under at positive 140. Um, a couple things here. Uh, Ning Wang Yao is a uh, TUF uh, winner, actually featherweight winner. Um, he won the China for China uh, in one of the seasons. I did not actually watch that season. Um, I'm going off of notes here. Uh, he's actually a very, uh, very skilled grappler. Good, very good Greco-Roman wrestling. He exhibits very heavy top control. As you can see, he has an 80% takedown accuracy. He's got really good defensive wrestling at 75% takedowns defended. He's also a decent striker. He He's a volume striker, not super accurate, um, but he has good striking defense at 64%. He's also got a very decent record and a high KO percentage. So this guy can fight. Um, and the odds speak, you know, for what his abilities are, I believe. Uh, Marco Beltran, though, is also a good fighter, a younger, the younger out of the two, I believe. Um, he has the reach advantage. He has a five-inch reach advantage over Wang Yao. Um, he is a boxer. He's also a finisher. He's finished five of his six wins, um, but he's also showed some major holes in grappling. So the question here is who's going to get the better on the ground? Who's going to get the better on the feet? I feel like this guy right here, the tough TUF winner, is going to probably overcome uh, the challenge in Marco Beltran. He's going to get him to the ground and control him with the heavy top control. Um, Beltran also has been on a one-year-plus layoff, so we could see some ring rest here. My prediction here is for Ning Wang Yao to defeat Marco Beltran by uh, submission, rear naked choke, second round. Um, and as for the odds, we see him, you know, favored as we had said before. Under is not favored here at positive 140. That may be worth a shot. I'm not 100% sure on that. That that would be a play. Over is favored at negative 166. Next fight, we have Freddy Serrano versus Yao Ziku. And I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, and I forgive me if I haven't. A lot of these fighters I am not super familiar with, to be honest. I do not make it a habit of watching Chinese and Japanese fighters all the time. However, I do like to try to, uh, when I handicap, I really do my research on these guys. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I'm going to try to make refrain from making uh, any remarks that I'm going to regret, but we'll just keep it at that. Um, so, Freddy Serrano, Yao Ziku. Uh, Serrano's coming in as the favorite at negative 162, Ziku at positive 145. Over-under set at 2.5 rounds, negative 202 for the over being favored and the under at positive 170. And let's see here. Let's get this up here where I can see these guys got a Colombian and we've got a Chinese fighter. Uh, the Chinese fighter has 50% wins by sub and 50% by decision. And we have a 50-50 KO to decision uh, ratio with Freddy Serrano. So <laughs> don't have a whole lot of data on Freddy Serrano. Uh, we do have some takedown stats here, but they're not really I mean, we don't have a good sample to choose, select from as far as our statistics here for Ziku. Um, only fought a number of times prior to this that the UFC has stats on here for us to pull from. 
A uh, couple things. Freddie Serrano, TUF Latin American uh, participant, very high wrestling credentials. Um, he's Olympic bronze uh, winner in freestyle wrestling. Um, he's had some issues and struggled with transitions to uh, MMA with his wrestling abilities. However, I would look for him to improve on that further, knowing, you know, learning from his past uh, fights and where he struggled there. I think he's going to come back and he's going to integrate that better this next time around. Uh, Ziku has had some issues with um, takedown defense. He's been vulnerable there. He's a very heavy striker who's capable of knocking guys out. Uh, he's improved in his takedown defense. Um, and I believe now he's training with the Black Zillions, which is going to help him tremendously with his takedown defense. So question here is who's going to get who, the better of who on the feet? I think Ziku will get the better of Serrano on the feet. You can see a KO here. However, if Serrano is able to get Ziku to the ground, we're going to see heavy top control and uh, possibly a submission here um, on the ground or ground and pound TKO for Freddie Serrano. Um, I always like to go with the wrestler or wrestler, as I would say, um, just because I feel like wrestlers have the dominant base uh, over strikers. Now, I want to look at more footage before I, you know, really put anything into this. But my prediction is for Freddie Serrano to beat Yaziko by decision. Uh, and our odds here for that show us that, yes, Serrano is favored here, probably due to his massive wrestling pedigree. Um, the big question is how well that Black Zillions training camp is going to help Ziku with his, uh, you know, takedown defense. And we could see him stuffing takedowns here rather easily. Over under set at 2.5 rounds. I feel like this will go over and, this, and the odds do indicate that. I don't have any arguments there. Moving on to the women's fight here. Courtney Casey versus Sio Hiham. Uh, Casey is the American fighter here. Uh, coming in as a favorite at negative 145. C.O.H. Ham is underdog at positive 130, over under set at 2.5 rounds, over being favorite at negative 221, and the under at positive 185. Um, this should be an interesting fight between these two women, uh, Courtney Casey being the larger of the two fighters, C.O.H. Ham being more of a technical striker and having the speed advantage here, having a little bit more professional experience as well. We've seen her grind out 87% of her victories by decision, um, I feel like naturally she's a lighter fighter. She's also a volume striker. Both these gals strike pretty consistently at a consistent rate. Um, I think the defense here definitely goes to Ham. She can stand in the pocket and defend well against brawlers and other boxers um, and technical strikers. So she's got a definite striking advantage here against Casey. Casey has a good chin. Her nickname's Cast Iron. Um, she's definitely got the power advantage here. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Uh, my lean here, though, is I'm going to go with my gut. I feel that Courtney Casey will more than likely win this one via uh, decision. Um, Seal Heham probably has some judo abilities as well. Um, she's probably got a good defensive base, rest, good defensive wrestling, and good defensive judo against rest wrestling takedowns. I'm curious what her credentials are there. She's mainly a striker. And unfortunately, I cannot see what she has here. Um, I'm curious to see if she has, as far as her pedigree. Um, and it doesn't say here at all about black belts at all. So I think she's just mainly a kickboxer. So I'm kind of curious. I'm going to do a little more research on her. They both fought Joanne Calderwood. Um, and both lost via decision to Calderwood, both struggling. The one who did more damage, I think, to Calderwood was Courtney Casey. Uh, so look for Casey to probably get the better out of the two of these gals during the fight and standing up with power. Um, I could see her dominating her also in the clinch due to her size. So my uh, lean is to go with Courtney Casey to defeat Seohi Ham via decision. Um, and our odds, like we were saying here, per, pretty much reflect that with with the odds. Moving on, contra very controversial fight right now um, in the uh, 
betting world or MMA betting world, I guess you'd say. There are a lot of rumors surrounding this fight with mobster activities on one side of this fight. There's been a lot of weird line movement too, so definitely keep an eye on this one. Very curious to see what the outcome's going to be and not sure that I will be taking part in this uh, at all. However, um, one thing that <laughs> it looks like the odds, <laughs> this line moved. It was definitely not this favored at the under. It looks like one of these guys is going to get finished <laughs> by the way that these odds suggested at negative 260. Um, you might be able to jump on that with a parlay and get a freebie there if it is fixed. Um, people are calling bullshit on the fixing. And you know what? You're fucking idiots because these fights get fixed all the time. It's not that hard to approach a desperate fighter who wants money to throw a fight. These guys don't make very much money at all. And definitely, definitely, definitely uh, slipping money under the table to these guys could be profitable for somebody who doesn't even get twenty-five dollars to $50,000 per fight in the UFC. I mean, it's ridiculous that they don't pay these fighters. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised at all to see this one go down early in the first round. So with that being said, Leo Kuntz, um, Taehyung Bang definitely has an advantage standing up here. Leo Kuntz is more of a... Um, He's more of a balanced fighter, I guess you'd say. Uh, no real, uh, no real strengths or super big weaknesses, I guess you'd say. He's very well rounded, I guess is what I'm looking to say. Um, seven KOs, five subs. He's got a good chin and he's aggressive, but he's not spectacular at any one thing. Um, he's finished almost all of his fights uh, that he's won. Tai Hyun Bang has massive KO power, but he's been vulnerable to takedowns. So more than likely, if Leo Kuntz is smart here, he's going to get the ground, get this guy to the ground. He's going to keep him there with top control and submit him or ground and pound him out. Uh, we could just, you know, it's kind of hard to say what's going to happen here. It may be worth a shot um, on the odds here at Tai Hyun Bang if it is a fixed fight and Bang or Kuntz was, uh, you know, in on it some way, one shape or form. Uh, it's hard to say. I'm going to keep doing some research on Twitter, see if I could dig deep here and do, you know, find anything on it. And if I do, I'll post a play, you know, more than likely just going to be laying off this one completely though, due to the controversy. And it may not be fixed at all. You know, we don't know, but just thought I would mention that. But my lean here is for Leo Kuntz to defeat Tai Hyun Bang via uh, submission. Um, and I think it's going to definitely be an under pick here. Regardless of who wins, I think somebody's going to get finished. Um, moving on, we've got Yui Chulnam versus Mike De La Torre. Um, this one I'm definitely looking forward to, but I'm not going to. I'm actually not going to be watching any of these fights because I have to. Uh, I have work in the morning. I am actually a professional, and I do have a normal life outside of this. Um, so I can't stay up into the wee hours of the night to watch Chinese fighter, Chinese and Japanese fighters in another time zone. However, I probably post all these plays before I go to bed and after watching some more footage. Um, but Mike De La Torre coming in as a pick -em against Yu Chun Nam, who is the hometown favorite here. Um, over under being uh, over under is set at 2.5 rounds. Over being favored at negative 134 and the under at positive 115. A um, couple things on this one here. Uh, Mike De La Torre. One thing that comes to mind, and the first thing that comes to mind to me is chin. Chin issues with Mike De La Torre. He got knocked the fuck out the last fight, I believe it was. I forget who it was, too. Um, he's also knocked a guy out as well. So <laughs> this guy tends to yeah, either expire or expire another guy. Um, last two fights, they both ended in the first round. I, I really don't see anything different happening here. Um, I see him probably getting a knockout here. Um, against the guy he's fighting or getting his ass knocked out. Um, if he's smart at all, though, um, he's going to probably try to take the fight to the ground. He's only gone the distance once in one of his wins. Um, he's had some issues on the mat, so you could see him on his back here. Uh, Dong Yang is, he's a rusty fighter, okay? Or excuse me, Yoichon Nam 
uh, he has nine stoppages. Okay. Uh, he's pretty good on the feet. I'm not going to lie. The guy definitely can, has legitimate, uh, ability to KO guys. Um, but he also likes to grind out some decisions too. So as far as striking, we've got a better technical striking on this side. We've got more of a brawler slash boxer style with De La Torre, uh, got much better striking defense with the Korean bulldozer. Um, look for this guy to probably bulldoze De La Torre, but we could see either one of these guys go early, and I think they're going to go early. Um, we've got some good takedown defense, better takedown defense with De La Torre. I think the advantage goes to him there. Um, just look for this guy. He's South Korean. He's at home. You know, UFC likes to promote these fights. I think we're going to see a knockout here, and I don't think it's going to be De La Torre doing the knocking out. I think we're going to see the Korean bulldozer bulldoze through De La Torre's weak chin. So that's my prediction for this one. I feel like uh, we're going to see the Korean bulldozer uh, win this one via TKO, probably second, early second round. And our odds here, let's see what they say. They don't like the under. Uh, bookmakers don't like the under here. They're They're... You got positive money on the under. I think that's a good bet um, if you should you decide. And I think this is also a pretty sharp bet right there. Um, but, you know, we could see anything. Uh, last fight here on the prelims, we've got Jake Collier versus Donggi Yang. Uh, Yang coming in as an underdog at positive 110 against the favorite Jake Collier, who is coming from the United States at favorite at negative 121, over under set at 2.5 rounds. Over being favored at negative 129, under at positive 110. Not a whole lot for me to say here on these guys. Um, another hometown favorite here with pretty good record. Collier, good striker. A um, couple things to note about these guys. Uh, Dungi Yang has actually probably got quite a bit of ring rust. He's only competed twice since 2012. Um, in his previous fights, he's been very susceptible to takedowns. Um, he's only de he's defended at a rate of 58.33%, and that's against lesser wrestlers, um, non-American wrestlers, um, wrestlers in the Asian circuits, which you know tend to not have quite the wrestling credentials that a lot of American wrestlers have in Division One. Um, Collier definitely has better wrestling partners and trainers. Um, I think he'll try to exploit that. Um, so look for that. Um, he also has a better takedown defense against better wrestlers. He's fought three times as much in the same amount of time that Yang has fought. So I think the experience and the freshness of Collier is going to probably take effect here. This guy's got a 92% finish rate with the KOs. Uh, <laughs> so I don't think that this one's going to go uh, over. I think it's going to go under. We're going to see a lot. I think we're going to see a lot of finishes this card. So my prediction for this one is for Jake Collier to finish Dongi Yang via submission in the second round, uh, probably late second round. Um, we could see a good KO though here if Yang lands flush on the chin of Collier. So, uh, keep that in mind. I think the under might be a good bet here. Not sure. I want to look at footage on these guys. Uh, so those are my leans there. Moving on to the main card, we've got Du Hoi Choi versus Sam Cecilia. Cecilia, who's mainly like a brawler slash wrestler. Ho Choi uh, is a technical, more technical striker out of the two of these guys. Got a really good uh, winning percentage here, 12 and one against Sam Cecilia, who's 15 and five. This guy's competed mainly on Asian circuits. Um, he's got a 75% KO, TKO. Cecilia has been known to leave himself open to technical strikers and has been susceptible in the past. Cecilia is, I believe, coming off of a victory off of his latest bout, which wasn't too long ago, actually. Uh, he won against Yautzen Metza in a decision, which was kind of surprising. He also TKO'd Akira Khorasani. Um, I think that the more dangerous striker here is definitely Yu Choi. Um, and 
Du Ho Choi, excuse me. I'm getting these guys' names mixed up. Uh, so, you know, I this one's kind of tough for me to predict, but I, I think that this kid is probably going to get the better of Cecilia. Cecilia's been a much higher fight IQ guy as of late. He's kind of given up on the brawling style. He's He's gone more to a uh, more disciplined approach to striking, not leaving himself open as much. However, he does leave his chin open at times still. He likes to get, when, when, when the crowd gets into the fight, he tends to like really bring it up a notch and he, he will leave himself open. That could be capitalized here by this uh, technical Korean, South Korean striker. Uh, I don't think this one's going to go to the distance. That's what my gut tells me, and I usually my gut's right. Um, so my my prediction is for Duhoi Choi to defeat Sam Cecilia via TKO second round. Uh, I think it'll go under. All right, moving on. We have Sexy Yama, Yoshihiro Akiyama versus Alberto Mina. Uh, Akiyama coming in as quite a heavy favorite at negative 161. Alberto Mina, positive 144. Over-under set at 1.5 rounds with the over being favored at negative 197. Under at positive 166. Looking at the two of these guys, Sexy Yama has not fought quite as much as Alberto Mina. Mina is a Brazilian. Uh, he's got quite the flight out to... Uh, South Korea. <laughs> so the time zone differentials there may play a huge role in a lot of these fighters. You got to keep that in mind. Plus, they're fighting on our time, which would be 2 a.m. starting out with the prelims and 5 a.m. with the main card. That's Pacific time, mind you. So I think that uh, this guy is definitely probably the more. Uh, well, these guys are probably about evenly matched. This guy's record speaks mainly from, you know, amateur slash professional professional fights. Mina has fought in the UFC before, uh, but he doesn't quite have the heavy, you know, competition that Sexy Yama has had. Um, he did have a first round TKO, and I, I believe Sexy Yama is probably. Uh, Sexy Yama is probably going to be considered the more skilled out of the two of these guys and more experienced. However, Mina is a younger fighter. He's got some experience as well. He's a dangerous fighter. And I think that the chin of Sexy Yama is kind of hitting its limit. It's kind of the Dan Henderson mentality that, yeah, you're getting ready to retire, bro. And you probably should retire soon before you get KO'd like every time. Okay. But, you know, Despite that, Sexy Yama has always been a dangerous fighter, very dangerous, very high-level wrestling and judo, uh, very, very good takedown defense at 94.87%. We're not going to see him get taken down. It's going to probably stay on the feet, and more than likely, one of these two guys will get finished. Um, but, you know, we could see a decision, too. Uh, that's a tough one for me to call here. Uh, the last fight, with the TKO, with Mina TKOing Shinzo and Zai, uh, you know, that really was quite impressive. And we could see the same thing here, although probably not likely. So my prediction here is for Alberto Mina to defeat Yoshihiro Akiyama uh, via unanimous decision. I think that he's going to outstrike him volume-wise and get the better of a rusty, ring-rusted Yoshihiro Akiyama. So I think that's a good underdog bet. Next fight, we have Dominic Waters versus Don Young Kim, stun gun. This should be one of the most electrifying fights on the card other than the main event. I'm very much looking forward to reviewing this fight after the fact. Dominic Waters trains out of Jackson's MMA in Albuquerque, New Mexico at high elevation. Don Young Kim is a very, very dangerous fighter. Probably the most dangerous fighter in the Asian circuit, if you were to ask me. Um, he's got a record of 20 and three. Uh, both these guys are dangerous fighters. I like the Jackson Winkle John strategist mentality and chess match strategies that they like to bring to the ring. Um, they usually can really squeeze the most out of their fire fighters. 
and I do believe that it is one of the best training camps in the world. Um, so looking at the odds, we have a massively inflated Don Young Kim at negative 833 and a Dominic Waters at positive 524. I think that these odds are way, way inflated. Um, if I'm to lean, my lean would definitely go with Don Young Kim to get this one via decision, probably unanimous. However, if they employ a good strategy on Dominic Waters, we could definitely see an upset here. Dominic Waters is probably more naturally athletic than Don Young Kim. However, Don Young Kim has far more experience and technical striking abilities, much more dangerous on the feet. Very, very um, high level judo, high level judo, takedown abilities, top control, you name it. Dominic Waters better have a good strategy coming in, but I think that we're going to see some surprises here from Dominic Waters. I think that this one, you know, Nick Kalikas, fuck this, you know, I don't know what this these odds opened up at, and I'm curious what they opened up at, but massive money is coming in on Don Young Kim. We could see an upset here for sure. Um, I'm curious. I got to see the line openings there. I haven't looked at them. Um, I might just ask over Twitter if you, anybody's curious. Over under set at 2.5 rounds. I think this one's probably going to go over. I think it's going to go to decision. I don't think we're going to see a finish here. Um, but, you know, you never know. Could see like a rear naked choke from Dominic Waters. Um, my lean here, though, is to, it's, oh, it's going to be with Kim at home. Uh, but I think it will be a much closer fight than what people suggest. I think it's going to go over, though, at negative 134. I think that's a good bet. But I'm not sure it's actually going to be an official play. I, I'm not sure about that. So moving on. Then, so my, my prediction here is Don Young Kim to defeat Dominic Waters via split decision. Um, the last fight on the card, Benson Henderson versus Jorge Masvidal. This fight I'm definitely looking forward to the most on the card uh, besides the Comey event. Uh, Jorge Masvidal, Benson Henderson, both very, very game fighters, good fighters, uh, tons of experience on both ends. Um, Masvidal is, used to be a street fighter um, down in the Florida area, and he trains out of Florida, American top team. Benson Henderson, Taekwondo, black belt, um, high-level wrestler, um, just a uh, Brazilian BJJ black belt as well. Both these guys just have – they're really experienced fighters. Um, transitions, you name it. Boss of it all is hard to take down. Super hard to take down. Henderson is also hard to take down. Um, and when he does get taken down the transitions, you don't want him on the ground with you. He can submit you off his back. He can submit you anywhere, and he can reverse you anywhere. So we are we could see this one pretty much being on the feet the whole time. And I would give a slight advantage to Masvidal on the feet. I think he has a better striking and power and he's recently been finishing guys on the feet. So keep that in mind here. Uh, Henderson, though, has had a lot of success with guys that gas. Um, Masvidal, I don't see him gassing here. He's gone five rounds before with uh, Gilbert Melendez back in the strike force days. And I think he's a very underrated fighter. I like the odds on him. If you look at the odds, he's a two-to-one uh, underdog. And I think this is a pretty evenly matched fight here. I give a slight advantage to Henderson on the ground and the wrestling abilities, but I don't think he's going to be able to get Masvidal down. I really don't. Uh, Masvidal has amazing takedown defense, defensive wrestling, and he's got underrated wrestling as well. We could see Henderson end up on his back. Um, over under set at 4.5 rounds. Under um, is not favored here. The over is favored at negative 196. Something tells me that there's going to be a finish here. I, I like the four rounds to get the job done between two very experienced fighters. Um, so I'm going to probably go out on a limb here and probably get some humming and hawing from, you know, people. And I'll probably get a lot of guys that think I'm a fucking idiot or whatever for wanting to suggest this. But um, I like this as an underdog pick. I think it's a sharp pick with Jorge Masvidal at two to one for your money. And I also like the under as well here. Um, at almost a one and a half, you know, 
a little over one and a half for your money. So my prediction here is for Jorge Masvidal to defeat Benson Henderson via KO or TKO in the second or the third round. I think that Benson Henderson has chin issues that have been overlooked. I think that Jorge Masvidal has improved even more on his striking, and he's gotten much more aggressive with his striking. And um, I, I see that he's not going to be – I don't think he's going to be afraid at all, and he's going to be very comfortable on the feet with Henderson. And I think he's going to get the better here. I think he's going to really come out aggressive on this card, and I think we're going to see a KO here. I would not be surprised at all. So – that's my prediction and uh, my lean for that last fight. And uh, that's about all that I have for this now. Um, any other updates that I come into or info, I will post to Twitter as soon as I find it. Um, please, please, please make sure that you add us as a subscriber um, to our YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, let's see, let me get rid of our screen sharing. So make sure that you add us with our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com forward slash best or forward slash plus best MMA picks. We're also on Instagram forward slash best MMA picks, Facebook forward slash best MMA picks. We will be uh, implementing a new uh, way of distributing our picks between the social media followings. Um, so make sure you add us to all of them so that you get all the updates and all the picks um, for free. And please, 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 if you are so obliged to make sure that you retweet us on Twitter and share, give us thumbs up or plus one. Uh, we really do appreciate that. And we're able to keep this free that way um, because this stuff does take time to do. And I want to try to keep it free. So uh, with that being said, good luck, everybody. And stay tuned on Twitter and on the Facebook groups. I'm going to post a pick on each of the groups. Uh, my most confident picks, uh, my top three picks are going to, one's going to go on each of the groups. So make sure that you add us, follow us um, to get all the picks. And the majority of my other free plays will be on Twitter. Um, and most of my info and updates will be posted on Twitter. But stay tuned for the picks um, on those other groups. So uh, everybody have a good night. And, uh, Let's cash this one. See you at the window.